All right, guys, so today we're going to start our lecture for Expanding Horizons. We've got a lot of content. Just to remind you, um, the notes on my board are there. Everything that's in blue is going to be added by me um, after the effect. If I add it in blue, it's probably really important, and you're going to want to have it. So let's get started. So when we start talking about Expanding Horizons, we're going to start really talking about uh, Portuguese exploration. Now Portugal is going to become a major trade leader. They're the ones who are going to be pushing um, a lot of trade and a lot of power. Now the Portuguese are going to be fighting against the Spanish. Uh, the Spanish and the Portuguese have historically hated each other and we're going to see that's going to become a major issue. So first thing you need to know is the Portuguese are ocean-based societies. They discover the Azores, uh, which is where they get sugar. Another major thing you need to be aware of is that the reason why the Portuguese and the Spanish are going to try to do sea travel in order to get to Asia is because they're frustrated with the Muslim and Italian system of making money via Silk Road. At this point, the Muslims have agreed to only trade with the Italians, and the Italians have agreed to only trade with the Muslims. By protecting each other, they're making themselves incredibly rich. So. The Asia, and Asia Muslims purchase the goods, they carry it to the Middle East, the Muslims only sell it to Italians, the Italians sell it to Europe, and then they sell it for crazy amounts of money. That is the foundation of the Silk Road. It is a huge component, which is why um, the Italians are going to become so incredibly wealthy, is because they protected themselves, and that's why they can pay for the Renaissance. So, Europeans are tired of paying crazy crazy prices for silk and spices and porcelain and all this stuff, so they're going to start uh, investing in a sea route. And this sea route is going to be a faster way to get to Asia without having to pay the Italians or the Muslims. Because the Italians, because they're so wealthy, you're getting really arrogant, they're ca uh, causing major problems in Europe, and people are getting really frustrated. We're also going to have European missionaries. And your first real major missionary the biggest one is John <coughs> of M-O-N-T-E-C-O-R-V-I-N-O. -E He's Roman Catholic. Should I pick another color? Would it be better if I picked another color? Yeah, it's really hard to say. Okay. Okay, so tell me that, and then I can adjust. If you don't tell me that, I'm just going to keep doing it. Would be better in red, maybe? Yeah. Yeah? Can you spell it again? Yes, I'm going to have to rewrite it. All right. Raylan, tell me if this works. So it is the most active one. Is, jo is that better? Hello? Yes. John of M O N T E. C O R V I N O, and he is Roman Catholic. He's from Spain, and he converts around 500,000 people. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Okay? So, he is going to be going around and he's going to try to. Uh, go ahead and um, convert people, which is a big deal. So, when we have missionaries, the three reasons why Europeans are going exploring is God, which is obviously Christianity, gold, which is wealth, and glory is they want to be famous. So the basic reason why our European explorers want to go are for these three major reasons. Now, when we start talking about technology, <coughs> technology is the only reason why this can occur. With the evolution of certain machines, certain tools, and all that stuff, that is the only reason why this can go. If you're ahead of me, stop. If you're with me, pay attention. Don't get too far ahead. It's all here. It's not going anywhere. I'm only going to add. Okay? It's not going anywhere. Okay? So, with technology, what we have for the first time, this is one of your midterm test questions. There's two questions based on all this stuff, so it's worth your time to pause for a second because it's on your test on Friday, on Thursday, and it's on your test in a couple weeks. So, major technology. The first one is the Chinese rudder. The Chinese rudder looks like this off the back, okay? It's literally just a stick that they're pulling in the water, and it allows them to navigate in, in smaller spaces larger ships. 
which is a big deal, because now they're taking larger ships into smaller ports, which means trade's only going to increase without much efficiency. Square sales. Who's going to be using the square sales? The Europeans. And that's what makes them different. When you think of, like, um, have you ever seen the movie Pocahontas? Okay, they come in these major ships over. Those are the square sails. It makes it for faster sailing. It doesn't make it easy to turn. It makes it really, really hard to turn. However, when you're going from Spain to the New World, do you really have to turn that much? No, exactly, which is why it's a good deal. Navigation, we have the astrolobe. This is another midterm question right here on that. It uses the stars. For the first time, our um, sailors are going to be sophisticated enough with the correct tools in order to chart um, their progression via stars, which means routes can be planned via the stars, which makes a big deal. This is how people are trademarking their little routes. Okay, so when we get a little bit further, uh, knowledge of winds has been a continuing one. This one's really going to be on the Atlantic, that we're starting to really control the winds or understand the winds. And then the Volta du Mar, which manipulates wind sails in any direction. It's a triangular sail, and what that looks like. Okay, so you have your square sails, all right, and then you have a triangular sail back here. This is your Volta du Mar. It's your triangular sail, and it allows you to kind of be able to steer. So one, two, and then three. These are your midterm questions. They're going to be asking you about it. They're big deals. These are the three major um, trading things. All right, so Portugal. Now, Portugal is going to be a huge innovator of trade. The reason why they're a huge innovator of trade is because they are going to um, have Prince Henry. Now, during this time, Europeans can begin... And begin exploring because they have large tax revenues. And strong standing armies. Protect home and abroad. Okay. Now, so because all of a sudden Europeans are becoming a lot more, their state power is being a lot more consolidated, which means all of a sudden our European states are no longer kind of these flimsy borders. They're really starting to con uh, control their, uh, really starting to control their boundaries and borders. They have a lot of tax revenue. If you have a lot of, so what is tax revenue? Who can raise your hand and tell me what's tax revenue? Raylan. Just getting money from yeah, so you have certain costs you have to pay for, correct? You have to pay all of your government employees, you have to pay for basic foundations, correct? All right, well, if you have more than that, it's a surplus of tax revenue. Tax revenue is going to be, be able to spend on other things. Those other things are going to be based on technology and ships. So because Europeans are making a lot of money off taxes and they don't have to spend as much, okay, they're able to have larger armies because larger armies, are they expensive or cheap? They're very expensive. And they have a lot more extra money that they can even spend beyond that. They are able to spend money now for the first time doing other things. Just like when you get older. When you get out of college and you start working your first job, you're not going to be traveling the world your first couple of years of working. You do know that, right? You're going to have to be paying off like life expenses. You're going to have to start paying back college. You're going to be poor for a while. Then eventually, when you get to my old age, then you can start traveling because you have the extra money. European countries have settled themselves. They're starting to actually make money and can actually start doing things. So that's why. All right. So um, Portugal, they're going to have Prince Henry, and he's going to start the first navigation school. In his first navi navigation school, he has Christopher Columbus, de Gama, and Cabot. Would you say it's a successful school or not? Absolutely. Hugely successful school. You're also going to have a guy named Vasco da Gama, who is one of his, uh, he's going to be the first one to sail around the tip of Africa. He is a very big deal because he reaches India. He reaches India in 1498. Okay, changes everything. 
Dangerous world trade. For the first time, Europeans can go ahead and get to India without having to pay a Muslim or an Italian. That way, all of a sudden, people are now able to kind of control their power and control their influence, which is a big deal. So, it's going to be a huge, huge idea. Now, in Spain, in um, China, we're also going to have another major player. Now, I'm going to squeeze this in over here. Don't hate me. Zhang He, Z-E-N-G. Zhang He, he's a Chinese explorer. Sent to Europe. Middle East by Yongle, Y O N G L E, Yongle advances Chinese navigation. Like Henry of Portugal. So all around the world, people are doing a better job of advancing and doing better. So we're going to see that is going to be a huge part of making sure that um, the whole world is going to be trading at a much faster rate. So when we are going through, and there we go. Okay, so Zhang He, he's going to be Chinese, he's going to explore, and he's going to advance it just like that. So, we talk about Spain. Now, Spain hates Portugal and wants to compete in the spice market as well. Now, Spain right now has, um, has had two major things happen. First major thing is the Reconquista. Reconquista. It kicked. Muslims out of Spain. Okay? Equals success. So, one big thing that happens there. And they also have a huge marriage that's the biggest, probably one of the biggest marriages of, uh, of all. They have Fernando. F-E-R-A-N-A-N-D-O of Aragon and Isabel of Castile, marry and create a Spanish state. Now, with their marriage, all of a sudden, Spain has a lot of money, has a lot of organization, and what we're going to see is they're going to use that to start uh, building their empire. So, with the Reconquista, which is kicking all the Muslims out of Spain, with the marriage of Fernando of Aragon, Isabel of Castile, they are able to use their money, their influence, in order to start conquering. Because they hate Portugal, they decide they want to take on Portugal and the European trade. So they hire Christopher Columbus, an Italian, to sail west to go east, and he discovers Hispaniola and Cuba, and, but that is not the West Indies like he was supposed to do, and because of that, he it's not highly valued while he's alive. All right, to your boards, here we go. All right, here we go. On your whiteboard, please tell me. What is you? What is also known as your triangular sail? What is also known as your triangular sail? Good, good. What do we got, Jack? There you go. All right. Um, what is the name of the tool that looks at the stars for navigation? Good, good. Regan. Astrolobe. Astrolobe. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is um please tell me what is the name of the gentleman who is gonna spread Roman Catholicism throughout the world in a major rate. Good. 
Good, good. Who is it, Campbell? John of Monte Corvino. There you go. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the gentleman who is going to advance Chinese navigation like Henry of Portugal? No, he's a sailor. No, he's a sailor. Who is it? Who is it? Calder. Yongle. Yongle. Zhang He is an explorer. He's a Chinese explorer sent to Europe by uh, Yongle. Period. Yongle advances Chinese navigation like Henry of Portugal. Yongle is the ruler. Now, Yongle is going to do a couple other things which we're going to get to here. Um, but Yongle is going to advance Chinese advance. Uh, Navigation. Zhang He is like a Christopher Columbus, except of like culture. <laughs> this isn't actually accomplished much. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the Muslim traveler who's going to wander around. We've talked about it many times. What is the name of the Muslim traveler? We've read a couple of his primary sources. Who goes around and wanders? Good. Who is it? I'm um, okay. There you go. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is um, three major reasons why Europeans want to go exploring. Good, I got one, two, three. Drew? There you go. On your whiteboard, please tell me who is Portugal's biggest rival? Good. Olivia? Spain. What are two reasons why Europeans are able to compete now on the world stage? What are two major reasons why European states are able to compete on a world stage? Good, good. Cool. Um, taxes, money, and armies. Tax revenue and large armies. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is going to make European ships faster. Good, good. Amanda? The square sales. Square sales. All right, here we go. So, what we're going to have is Spain is going to hate Christopher Columbus sails for Spain, but he's actually an Italian. We have other explorers, Vasco Nunez, you don't really need to know him too much. Uh, Ferdinand Magellan, he, we're going to come back to him in like two weeks. He's going to sail around the world. He sails from two known parts to through unknown parts to known parts. He doesn't actually go circumnavigate. He's the first one to go around the world as and go to all the unknown parts. He actually gets murdered in the Philippines. Um, you're not supposed to flirt with the chief's daughter. I mean, isn't that like a general rule? Like, you don't flirt with the chief's daughter. And that's what he was doing, so they murdered him. That's awesome. That's awesome. You're missing the point. That's a great story. Anyway, we'll come back. Yeah, didn't go around the world. Just one of his crew members did. Yeah, only five minutes all the way back. But technically, he gets credit for it. Makes no sense. I know. I, know. I agree. But it's a great story that gets murdered in the Philippines, though. Can we agree? They chop off his head, and everyone else runs to the ships. Pretty cool. All right, so I sail for Spain, and Spain controls the Philippines and Mexican trade. So here we go. Uh, England and Russia are looking for the Northwest Passage, which, by the way, let me use a little 2016 relevance here. So the ice caps are melting up north. Yes? Okay. United States and Russia are competing about trying to make sure who is going to control that new uh, waterways. Because the Russians are trying to control it at a major rate. They've moved a ton of military forces up there. Because if you can control up there, it's going to make trade much faster. Is that crazy? What about we'll finally have a Northwest Passage because it didn't exist prior to this. What? Wait, wouldn't, wouldn't Canada actually have one too? Oh, no. Um, Canada's Canada. Yeah, Canada's Canada. So they don't really want to get involved. They don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. So, all right. So England and Russia are looking for the Northwest Passage. James Cook is going to be a big explorer. He's going to come to the Americas, which we're going to go um, into a lot deeper here in a little bit. 
Um, what we're going to see, trading posts, the Portuguese are going to start, they're going to start making land claims all along the coast of uh, Africa as we saw in our map, okay? They're going to start making claims and stuff like that. Then we start having major trading companies. Now major trading companies are going to play a huge role in the advancement of how things are going to spread. Now trading companies are the Dutch and the English are going to be your most powerful. The Dutch is the VOC. The English is the EOC. Isn't that lovely for you? They are going to compete, okay, against one another because they're going to have a ton of issues. Okay, and this will eventually turn into what will become the Seven Years' War. And the Seven Years' War is between um, your Dutch and your <coughs> English. And that's going to be the First World War. So, alright. So, your English uh, is going to be in India and a lot of American trade and triangular trade. Okay, it's going to really start happening. Triangular trade is the movement of goods between America and um, Africa and Caribbean. We're going to start seeing that pop up. Uh, as the government is going to start founding these companies, they're going to become very, very profitable. Okay? So, I'll let you get caught up for a second. What's up? Um, government founded companies that have a military make laws and make war whenever they want. Yeah, it's like, imagine if we gave Donald Trump a military to do his, like, construction companies and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So he could literally just attack someone for his business. Or, like, Mark Cuban or, um, who other major business leaders. That instead of saying, oh, I'm going to buy this land and trying to finesse it in the boardroom, he can just wage war. You think you're going to have a lot of wars or very little wars? No. Oh, yeah. Huge deal. Yes? What did you say triangular trade is between? Uh, triangular trade is between the, United, uh, the Americas, Caribbean, and uh, it's Europe, Africa, New World. That's a bit simpler. All right, where are you guys? VOC. Okay, perfect. So, if you want to talk about a couple other little things. Okay, so China is where I'm making some big things. So China, we're going to have the Ming Dynasty. Now, Ming Dynasty is going to try to reinstate Chinese 
Customs. Post. Mongols. And what is their um, dynasty name? John. Okay. Hongwu. The founder of the Ming Dynasty. Restores. Song and Tang culture. Back to China. And where are we putting this? You can put it anywhere you want, my darling. Okay, so you need to know Hong Wu. You need to know um, your next major uh, ruler is Yongle. Yongle, known for his encyclopedia. On Chinese customs. He was a Ming Dynasty ruler. With advancing Chinese sailing navigation. Okay, then you need Renaissance. to uh, great wealth from Silk Road. Use humanist. Ideas from Greek and Roman culture. To show how important it is to be moral. A R A S is a principal humanist. Alright. Renaissance began in Northern Italy. Okay, uh, humanism is a big concept, and Erasmus is a big one. Alright. To your boards, please, my darlings. To your boards. All right, here we go. So it's a little all over the place, but there's a lot of stuff this week. All right, here we go. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the two major trading companies? What are the names of the two major trading companies that are going to arise? Good. Campbell. ESC and BSC. On your whiteboard, please tell me what two groups of people are making their most money off of um, your uh, Silk Road. What two groups of people are making the most money off of the Silk Road? Good. Silk Road. What do we got? Beck? Italians and Muslims. Italians and Muslims on your whiteboard. Because the Italians are making so much money off the Silk Road, they start what in Europe? Because the Italians are making so much money off the Silk Road, 
They start what in Italy? What do you got? Philip? Renaissance. Renaissance. <coughs> On your whiteboard, please tell me. The Renaissance is going to be used to support what, what religious sect? Think about it. What religious sect is going to be supported? Religious sect. It's not. It's an ideology. I got one. I got two. Three. Think about it, people. What religious sect? Antonia? Roman Catholicism. Why do you know it's going to be Roman Catholicism, Antonia? Because the Vatican runs it in Yeah, the Vatican is located in Italy. Everything, if you've ever been to Italy or seen anything from the Renaissance, it's all based on Catholicism. It's all done in Italy. It has to be Roman Catholicism. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is... The what is it called when the Spanish are trying to get everyone out of Spain? I mean, all the Muslims out of Spain. They're not kidding. I'm trying to kick all the Spanish out of Spain. What is it called? I got one, two, three. Good. What is it? Regan. Reconquista. Reconquista. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the gentleman who reaches India in 1498? He's the first person to sail around the tip of Africa. He's Portuguese. Good, good. Who is it? Who is it, Alex? Vasco da Gama. Vasco da Gama. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is, uh, what is it called when people should leave morally, uh, morally right lives? Um, and it's based on Greek and Roman culture. And you should lead morally correct lives, and it's based on Greek and Roman culture, not specifically a religion. Ashley. Humanism. Humanism. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of uh, the, gen uh, the founder of the Ming Dynasty? Who is the founder of the Ming Dynasty? Good. Robert. Hong Wu. Hong Wu. On your whiteboard, please tell me what are the two reasons why European states become incredibly powerful? What are the two major reasons why? Good. Why? Amanda. Tax money and army. Tax revenue and army. On your whiteboard, please tell me where does the Renaissance begin? Specific. Good. What do we got? Abby. Northern Italy. Northern Italy, yes. Yongle. Yongle is known for his encyclopedia on Chinese customs. He uh, is a Ming. He's a big one. On your whiteboard, please tell me who is the most famous of the Chinese explorers. He's going to bring cultural items back to China. It's going to be sent out by Yongle. Good, good. Who is it? Megan. Zhang He. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the gentleman who sends Zhang He out to find cultural, uh, to learn stuff. Good. Olivia. The is also famous for sending out Zhang He and writing a what about Chinese customs and culture. Good. What is it? Raylan. What two dynasties is the Ming Dynasty trying to re-implement their customs and cultures? Good. Good. Calder. Song in the Tang. On your whiteboard, please tell me uh, what is... Uh, what high prices by the Italians is going to drive what region of the world to start exploring? High prices by the Italians is going to drive what part of the world out exploring to get to Asia? What part? Beck? Europe. Europe. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is... Who is the first country to start putting trading posts? in Africa, and which will eventually become Southeast Asia. Good. How much time do I have? Five minutes. Perfect. Drew, where? Who? Portugal. Portugal. On your whiteboard, please tell me 
What is the name of the gentleman who sails west to go east? He's considered a failure and his time. Good, good. What do we got? Alex. Christopher Columbus. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is um, Renaissance art is based on what? We talked about it earlier. I'm just asking in a different way. Ro uh, Renaissance art is based on what? I'll take that. There's a better answer, but it's not wrong. What is it, Ashley? Roman Catholicism is based on God. Humanism is not a bad answer, though. It's not a bad answer. But the better answer is Roman Catholicism. On your whiteboard, please tell me what two European countries are going to throw themselves into the center of exploration? What two of exploration? What two countries are going to rise as major powers in, in Europe? During this time, age of exploration, what do we got? Kaylee? Spain. Spain and Portugal. What two countries are going to lay the foundation to become economic powers during this time? They're going to lay the foundation. They're not quite there yet. To be economic powers. There we go. Good, good. Who are they, Campbell? The Dutch and the English. Dutch and the English. The Ming Dynasty follows what empire? The Ming Dynasty follows what empire? What is it, Olivia? Yan. What is another name for the Yan Empire? Who is actually the Yan Empire? Good. Who is it, Alex? The Mongols. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is... What is the name of the gentleman who's going to be the largest missionary during this time? He's going to convert about 500,000 people. Good. I got one. Two. Come on, come on, come on. Three. Good. Who is it? Charlie. There you go. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is... Uh, please tell me... What is the name of the first European country to get their hand on sugar? There you go. Cole. Portugal. Portugal. On your whiteboard, please tell me. Um, what are the two major things that Europeans want from Asia? What are the two major things Europeans want from Asia? Uramus, E-R-A-S-M-U-S. -E Good. What are the two major things? McKinnon. Silk and spices. Silk and spices. Okay. So what is going to happen with you today? I got to here. Would you agree? Right? I didn't really talk about this stuff. Yes? I mean, I kind of mentioned this real quick, but that's about it. So, as we get going from here on out, I stopped here. Tomorrow, you're going to pick us here. Does that make sense? So, tomorrow, I'll have notes on the board. Yes, I did kind of jump around a little bit. But when I am writing with second period, I'm going to write with green. Is that fair? So, that way, you can tell what I write and what I add. Is that fair? So, with you, I did red. With them, I'll do green. And we'll go from there. Yes? All right, guys, have a good day. Thank you. I will be here at lunch. Of course.